And so it's wrapped up in this lie that you need to hang, you need to, that you're your own God, you, your bank account is where your security comes from, and that if, and you can control your destiny. If I have more money, then I'll be happier and I'll be more secure. But there's all kinds of issues with that. or harder the more money you've made to let money like run through your life and be used to benefit others mm. like charitable charitable donations or to the church yeah um, or do you feel like it's been more difficult as you've made more money like do you feel like the consumption of the money you've made has stayed relatively the same as you've had more dollars in your bank account or yeah that is actually a really good question and it's i kind of have a or the answer i would give would be not so much yes or no or that it is or it isn't but i would put it in the framework of it's it gets harder the more money you have in your bank account it gets harder to give the same percentages of money mm. that you used to so yeah. you know when you're you're in your 20s or your 30s and you maybe it's like a good month if you have 10 or 15 grand in savings you're like dude i feel like we're doing pretty good you know and it's like totally man you know like you're like okay i got 10 grand in savings and 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 it kind of comes and goes pretty easily cuz you could like you get a tax return you're you're down to 2 grand you get your tax return and you're back up to 9 mm -hmm. and you're like oh money your your <clears throat> the percentage of your bank account the, the amount of, of your bank account goes up and down from a percentage perspective is really high yep and so, and then when you start making more money and you start getting six digits in your bank account and seven digits in your bank account, it's a lot harder to say, I'll give 80% of my money away. It was a lot easier to it's give a, the nine grand. Right. You got and, and so you're doing the, the nine million. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I remember in my twenties, if I cleaned out yeah. my entire life savings to give to something or to buy something, I was like, ah, whatever. I don't have that much money anyway, mm -hmm. even though from a, per, you know, even though it was a lot of money for me at the time in the scope of money, you know, mm -hmm. in the scope of money, percentage wise, I was willing to clear out my bank account pretty easily, you know? And so I was like, oh, well, there's an initiative that we're giving to at the church or we see something that we want to be a part of. It's like, yeah, we should, we, if you just wiped out your life savings, <laughs> it wasn't really a big of a decision. And so... But then when you start getting like seven digits in your bank account, you start, you know, accumulating significant assets. The idea that you would just let yourself go to zero again is really, really hard. Well, intuitively that does make sense because it's hard. The harder something is to acquire, the the less likely you are to want to give that up. Yeah. If, if there's, if, it, if it's scarcer, if it's harder to acquire, I would think it would be harder to let go of. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think in terms of overall dollars, definitely not. I mean, uh, it's easier to give larger sums of money or certain assets or whatever. Mm. At least for us, it has been. I know that's not the pattern for everybody. Um, yeah. Cause you hear like, if you're not, if you're not uh, generous with a little, then, then you will not be generous with a lot. And, that's, and I think that has more to do with, with the percentages than yeah and, and maybe maybe not i don't know i've i've known some people who really just struggle to give period and even think, after achieving even a thousand dollars after you've you've got millions yeah i mean i guess in that perspective it could be a little bit percentage wise but they're just generally speaking the more uh, i guess if, if you were to say put it in kind of a framework like our buckets and conduits description mm. that we use yeah that's really good i it, like i like I like that analogy. Yeah, I, and 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 so I mean, if you're wired as a conduit and you're you're wired and you have the gift of generosity, then 
you're going to really let money and material things flow through you really easily, no matter how much money you make. Mm -hmm. So, but then the people that are wired as a bucket, um, they have a really hard time letting anything flow through them. And so faith back to your question, which is like, or, or back to the example we were saying is like some people, even when they make more and more money, they, it, their bucket just gets fuller and fuller and it's very satisfying to them to fill the bucket. So the act of like letting stuff go out of the bucket can be very challenging for them mm. because they're, they, they, their, their heart is very, is very satisfied by watching the bucket fill up. And, and it's surprising, even small amounts can be hard for people to let go of when you're wired like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. So I guess I can see how kind of like answering my own question now that I'm thinking about it in terms of the bucket and the conduit, I can see how as you attain more money, if you have a, a bucket mindset and you've allowed, you, you're, you're more of, you're more the type of person to, uh, more like a banker. Like you just feel like you can't let go of anything. High, like a high CVI banker. You mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Not like literally a banker is your career. <laughs> <laughs> right. But yes, CVI banker. Like you're you're constantly worried about the future. You feel like um, you feel like you need to be extremely careful, extreme, extremely frugal. Yeah. Um, I could see how if you were wired that way, and as you started to attain more money, as your bucket got heavier and more full, v- actually the harder it would be to reverse the mindset of being a bucket versus a conduit. Right. And vice versa if you're a conduit you're used to letting stuff run through and you're getting joy out of that as more starts to pass through that just feels better and better i mean it's like you're you're in both situations i can see how money just amplifies whatever you're kind of predisposed towards that's exactly right you're right i mean that's really well put it's like your joy level depending on how you're wired, whether you're a a bucket or a conduit, your joy level get goes up as money comes in. Do you think you're, you're naturally, do you think that is like something that is, is it a personality level in in some ways? Like, you know, I've seen, I think I've seen both. Yeah. Some people are definitely given the gift of generosity as a spiritual gift from birth. And I mean, honestly, you were that way. You've just been really generous you were giving away your toys in the preschool. We always had <laughs> was a I actually no. <laughs> <laughs> Darn, that would no. be a good bragging point. But you, but, but I've I do seen, feel like I get. I've kind of naturally always gotten satisfaction. Yes, yes. In 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 all seriousness, yeah. there's people like yourself and people that we know that just really thrive and really have that spiritual gift of generosity. And other people definitely struggle with it more. Mm. And it's not a spiritual gift um, necessarily. Um, they might have other giftings, but, but being a conduit is not one of them, but you can absolutely become a conduit. I believe through understanding of, of, you know, understanding of what it means to be secure in Christ, understanding what it means to know the, the inheritance that you have waiting for you in heaven. And you can become more and more generous as you begin to understand those truths and your bucket can start to have maybe a few holes in the bottom (laughs) and start to let stuff through. And then, and then you can start experiencing that joy of giving and turn your bucket into a conduit for sure. So uh, I think you are, it is definitely a genuine gift, but just like all gifts, you can sort of, you can grow gifts that you're low in. Mm -hmm. Um, So certainly you're not, if you're currently a bucket today, it doesn't mean you're doesn't destined mean you to be never, a bucket all your life. You never know, be a conduit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, I think there's a there's a there's a lie about being there's a lie inherently in being a bucket, right? Mm, there's a yeah. lie that it, that if I hold on to everything, I'll be happier, mm. and that is absolutely. Mm-hmm just a fallacy that we are, I don't know, it could come from several sources in your yeah, life. Fear or fear, or maybe or it's, you've been told it's wisdom. Of happiness. Oh yeah. Wisdom. Right. Wisdom. You've been told it's wisdom to be a saver and I should save everything and accumulate as much wealth as I possibly can on this earth yeah. so that I'll be happier and more secure. And so it's wrapped up in this lie that you need to hang, you need to, that you're your own God. 
you your bank account is where your security comes from Mm -hmm. and that if and you can control your destiny if i have more money then i'll be happier and i'll be more secure but there's all kinds of issues with that especially if you if you understand eternity you understand uh security in 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 salvation and in christ storing up your treasures here versus right sending them forward right Right, and so I think there's there's people that have been sold that lie, mm-hmm. even even you know even for believers who've been raised that way. Yeah. It's like you know it's like family of origin kind of voices speaking into their life, and like because that can be difficult if it feels like it's coming from a place of because I could I I could see where you may even think like it's biblical wisdom. Yeah. To to be careful with your finances. Right. Right. To take care of your family. Um, yeah, it can start to feel irresponsible. You can feel irresponsible, I think, because of worldly voices. But then mm-hmm. you can you can you you can see how that gets associated with, oh, I'm 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 operating outside the the guidelines of, of biblical wisdom and yeah. biblical principles. Sure, because there is a few verses for sure that talk about you know storing up like the ant and being able to leave a yeah, leave a right. inheritance for your children's children. You know, and so there's some of those references there. But as with everything in the Bible, you know, you have to you have to read the entire summation Bible, the whole, right. See the summation of the whole thing. And it's like, yeah, absolutely. There's wisdom in that. But we know that the, that there is a framework of generosity in the Bible as you read through it. And that is that if you're generous, there's a myriad of verses and, and concepts in the Bible that basically promise that God will take care of you. And so you can give, in confidence, knowing that you're fulfilling those other verses about being wise and 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 saving, knowing that you'll that God will provide for you to to fulfill those verses around wisdom, while being extremely generous, knowing that God will provide seed for the sower and bread for food, and and that those who sow. Uh, generously will also reap generously. Mm-hmm. And so you can lean into those things to bring out your inner conduit and be a good conduit and be a source of blessing to the people around you and to your church and to the mission. You can do that confidently without, you know, without fear of, of, of not exercising wisdom and not having enough money in the bank account because God owns all the cattle, right? Yes. Um, so, so yeah, you, you can, you can do that. So, I guess back to the living in that bucket mode is sort of counter, um, sort of counter to really what we read in the gospels Mm -hmm. and you know what, and and obviously there's a heart issue there too, right? Yeah. It it shows what you're valuing. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think there's, you know, uh, our pastor, pastor Josh at Grace City, you know, he talks about the righteous rich, the righteous poor, the unrighteous rich and the unrighteous poor. So there's like four categories there. So you can you can store up a lot of treasure with great intentions, and if it's not, if it's a heart issue, uh, or you have you you have the right heart around it, yep. right? And you and you have you're applying wisdom. You can be dead broke and be in sin as well with your view around money. Mm. Yeah, that's one that people probably <laughs> don't think about too often. Right? Yeah, they're obsessing about it. They're idolizing it. They wish they had more of it. Typically associate those issues with the rich. Yeah. 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 Right. You can, you can be totally stingy and have no, and also be poor and yeah. making no money. Right. In yeah. fact, a lot of people that you know that are mm-hmm. on the lower socioeconomic spectrum are can get way. very stingy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, uh, uh, an investment advisor that I had at one point, he said, it's, it's really interesting when he looks at his, the, the, the cross section of his clients, he says, he said, all my clients with money, that have done that have been very blessed and have done very well. They're all really generous people. Interesting. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 Well. Yeah. That. That's. I was. Um. Man. What is that? What's? Do you remember the name of the devotion that you gave all the the men in the the immediate yeah. Weber family for Christmas morning and evening? Yes. With Spurgeon. Yeah. Spurgeon. Yep. I was reading the one from just a couple of days ago. Um the evening one i read it again last night Hmm. i thought it was really good um but it's kind of like the exact opposite um approaching this this topic from the exact opposite direction 
of the prosperity gospel, which would be giving and making it about the Lord so that your, your real motivation being so that you can, you can make a bunch of money in the process because you think it's like God is a, God is a, a, a vending machine, put something yeah. in and you get some, you, you get what you want out. Um, the, the exact opposite way of looking at that, which was this evening, um, devotional that I read was Spurgeon pointing out how financial ruin in the life of a Christian, um, is, is oftentimes God's way of saying, if you won't come to me with your hands full, you will come to me with, with your hands empty. Mm. Um, when you have, when you're choosing to not turn to me, when you have stuff, my, my, the only direction I can go as your father who loves you is to take it all away so that you will come to me, which is, which we would both agree is good because he's the ultimate treasure. And that's, that's ultimately what we really want. And so it is good that he does that. Um, but I think that's really, and it may seem kind of basic, but I think that's really might be one of the contributing factors to, um, the way God has wired the world and the way God parents us to use that term and why you see that people who have had a lot of success, people who have been able to build successful businesses and a lot of money does run through their life. (laughs) They're people that are generous because God, like you, in a way God's able to, to entrust you with those things. If you're able to stay consistently generous it's it's like saying yeah god can can give me resources god can god can can bless me in these ways but i'm not gonna but i i'm I'm not allowing it to to distract me um i'm still looking to the lord through through all of that oh dude that's 100 percent. there's so much packed into what you just said and you know uh, you know the god's always teaching us right? He disciplines those, those he loves. And he's always, we're always in the school of Jesus. And there's never a time that we're not. And so if we're not handling the gifts or the elements of this world appropriately, there's a good chance he's going to work on us. Mm-hmm. And it might be with a two by four, <laughs> yeah. you know, he may take away your toys. Yeah. Um, and so, and, and what you're saying too, is if you're, if you demonstrate faithfulness with the with the gifts he's given you money, you know, name your, name your good gift that he's given you. You know, there's verses that speak to like those who, you know, have been given much will be given more if you're faithful with, with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so absolutely. I mean, demonstrating faithfulness. I think that's why you do see this pattern. And I, I mean, Josh in a sermon a while back, he's like, you know, I, I've just lost count of the, the, the old grannies or the, the ladies that I see or, or men that I see that are generous and you see them 10 years later and they're just overflowing with resources and generosity and it's mm. just coming, it's just coming out of them, you know, and, and as people age and God just continues to give to those who's, who are a, a conduit and it's just, you know, again, you don't want to go prosperity gospel, but man, there's, a, say, yeah, there's a, a hard line. It is a hard I line. I think some people will listen to that and they'll, they'll they'll be like oh well i want a lot right of stuff too. and it, it's a hard line and it's a it's interesting but it's actually not that hard of a line or it's mm. not that confusing because it comes down to the heart mm. prosperity gospel is all about i want to make more money so i'm, I'm it's give to get yep. versus i actually care about the kingdom i actually care about others around me i actually want to love people around me yeah therefore i'm willing to I'm willing to be open-handed, open-fisted with the material things I have to bless other people. That's the difference between true generosity and prosperity gospel. Hey, everybody. Thanks for your interest in the Vertical Business Podcast. If you like what you heard today or you're just interested in all things business, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on bell notifications so you know when we're posting. We're typically posting two times a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, but you never know when we might not drop a, a short or something impromptu. Uh, And in addition to uh, on YouTube here, you can also 
follow us or find us on Spotify as well as Apple Music where we post our, our episodes as well. And then lastly, if you uh, want to engage with us outside of the podcast, you can find us on our website at gosparrow.com. Uh, that is where you can subscribe to our newsletter and uh, get access to our other content outside of the Vertical Business Podcast. So we're looking forward to seeing you there.